Libra, it's me, Stormy, and here's your horoscope for February 2018. So before we jump in, Libra, I want to say an extra special thank you to my friends at Hair Entourage for hooking me up with a cool little piece that I get to wear while I am naturally growing out my hair, but transitioning. It's in this weird length stage. So thank you so much. If you guys want to know more about Hair Entourage, they've got beautiful pieces, beautiful work. I've got all of it in the description box down below. So make sure you check it out. Now, Libra, this is a month of like Venus love, love, love for you. And not just love and romance, but there's just a lot of Venetian, let's bring harmony, let's bring beautification, let's bring sensuality, let's bring diplomacy. All of this kinds of love are on the table for you. Now, as we ended January, we had a lunar eclipse happening in the sign of Leo, lighting up the 11th house space for you. So giving you space, place, and time to be re-looking at who you are running with, right? Who's in your social crowd? They say that the five people you hang out with most are the people who are having the most influence on your life. Are those people nourishing your soul? Are you nourishing them, right? Let's look at that tribe circle and see what you've got going on because if it is not working out, that lunar eclipse is giving you a beautiful indication of it's okay to let go. Now to the other side of that, I really do think because that was our full moon for January and we will not have a full moon here in February, it means there's no huge Endings really so coming. more so than anything, I think we can use that lunar eclipse there in the 11th house to also give you a beautiful space to have some new friends and new tribe and have some new long range goals. And what's so great about the long range goals is that some of yours may be focused and concentrated at work and with coworkers or will involve coworkers, which is beautiful because we've got Venus moving into the sign of Pisces. This is very comfortable. They're, she's very happy. Both of these energies are very happy and it's happening for you in your sixth house, okay? So this is the place of coworkers, health, charity, small animals, daily routines, all of that is getting some harmonizing to it. You may decide that you want to beautify your workout routine or your workspace or you know what I mean, your daily routine. You may feel like it needs to have some more harmony in these areas. And so you may be taking action to make that happen. Now, on the other side, though, I'm thinking about this deep harmony between you and coworkers, right? There could be something collaboratively, professionally, that maybe you're working on together. Um, because it's Venus, you could certainly have some kind of office romance pop up, but I'm going to tell you, don't put your hands in it if that's not the right place, right? If that person is not good to go and you're not good to go and everybody can't accept the consequences of what could come from this office romance, leave that one alone. But I certainly do feel like Venus and Neptune are drawing someone into you in a work or professional fashion who maybe you end up having some kind of very significant connection with later on down the line because Venus and Neptune together are very much so soulmate energy. They like to pull soulmates in and this is not always romance. Sometimes this is just a really quality friendship. Sometimes it's just a soulmate touchdown. And that's where you just, you come in contact with a soulmate and just as quickly as you meet, you guys leave each other's lives, but it's expansive. You feel expansive after you meet a soulmate and you usually feel like getting getting your stuff going you feel like i gotta hit the grind i gotta do this i know what i gotta do it's kind of inspired energy so i really like that for you now in terms of beautifying your daily routine or looking at your gym life of course you could certainly have a romantic possibility coming into the gym and things like that but you could also just be looking in your daily routine like i am rushing around I'm making myself crazy, I'm not spending enough time, or hey, I'd like to just stop and enjoy some of the beauty of the season around me a little bit more. If you're feeling any call to kind of slow down, definitely take advantage of it. But this energy here is beautiful and very, very much so sensational for you. Then we talk more love as we're moving through this month. On the 15th, we've got a solar eclipse happening in the sign of Aquarius. And for you, this is in the fifth house, the house of true love, beginning romance, dating, conception, right? So for some of you, you could start to have these conversations about children. You know, you could be, your body could be having a conversation about children, whether or not you're actively participating in that conversation consciously. So <laughs> if you don't want to have kids, this is a really good month to pay attention to that stuff, okay? Now, this is also a time where if you have children in your life, this is a new beginning. This is our new moon for the month. So definitely take advantage of it. 
it's in nice connection with Uranus. So this could also be maybe you find yourself starting some kind of unexpected project or beginning something new. Conception is not just about pregnancy and children. Conception is maybe it's a brand new investment, a brand new project you're taking on. If you're in a couplehood, this could be a brand new beginning for you. And I will tell you though, with all this Venetian energy swirling around, you've got this solar eclipse happening over here in the fifth house. If you are single, get out into the world get out when we get new places we meet new faces and if you're single and you're wanting to have the opportunity to meet somebody all you got to do is take yourself out there venus is in your favor so it'll be beautifying you go to the gym i just really feel like you should just go to the gym <laughs> go to the gym there's somebody hot there all right guys let's break this one down by date so right at the beginning of the month on the 10th we've got venus moving into pisces very comfortable into your sixth house liking this giving those blessings to co-workers my freelance workers my employers who may be having to do something with employees this is a wonderful energy happening here to make all of those adjustments also to the routine and to things with your health okay do be careful because venus and neptune together while they're not as indulgent as Venus and Jupiter are, you can stop paying attention to what you're eating or you can overdo it with things and that will compromise your health as well. So just pay attention. Nothing too big though. As we get to the 15th, we see this solar eclipse happening here in Aquarius in this fifth house space. Now, not only the sun is being eclipsed, but also Mercury here. So making a connection with Uranus. So this is a very nice, big, new beginning energy for you. And it maybe is a little bit unconventional with this Uranian energy involved as well, okay? And I do think for some of you, online dating would be okay. You might be able to start a little something fancy and fresh on an online dating or something like that as well, just because that Aquarian influence is in there. When we get to the 17th of the month, though, I will tell you, I would just advise you not to make any big decisions because conversation and decision making becomes a little bit cloudy. On the 17th, Mercury is going to move into Pisces. Mercury in Pisces is in fall. It's not comfortable. Mercury's not comfortable here. He wants to make quick, sharp, clear, detailed decisions. And he can't because Pisces is a very vague energy. It's very blurry. So he doesn't have a clear picture. So you will think you know what you're doing talking about. And I think you find out on the other side that maybe it didn't. Take it slow. These energies will move on, okay? But this is certainly a time where communication, decision making is not as clear. But you can also lean into it the other side. Be creative. Use it because it's a very creative energy. It's a very forgiving energy. Speak forgiveness into your life if you need it, okay? Speak forgiveness of yourself and others into your life. Speak past. Passion. speak humility into your life if you need it right but it is certainly not a very strong energy for great decision makings not to mention we've got Mars coming into a square with Neptune the Sun will move into Pisces here on the 18th on the 25th Mercury aligns with Neptune still not clear and then on the 28th of the month we've got Mercury in a square to Mars so this is just conversation decision making thinking could all become kind of frustrating right and your actions become frustrating based off of the fact that you maybe don't have a clear path to cut with the direction and the thinking. So try and enjoy it for the lull and the fantasy and the creativity that it is, but I would definitely curb some of those really big decisions this month if you can avoid it. All right, Libras, I just love you a ton. Like this video, comment, share, subscribe. I hope to see you in the $3 Thursday happening this February, this month. Um, we're going to be talking about transits as they affect the natal chart. So if you are not clear on your transits, when somebody says, you know, Mars is in Sagittarius, you don't know where that's at on your chart or what's happening or what the influence is, this is definitely where you want to jump in and come learn with us. I've also got my brand new, completely reformatted Astrology 101 Basics class. And because I'm launching a new format at you, you can take the entire five-week course for 50 bucks in this March session only. So I hope to see you in that class as well. All of the details for everything, hair, astrology, $3 Thursday, it's all in the description box down below. So click down there and let's get connected. I love you guys. I'll see you next month. Bye.